hello there. I was just reading about how to give yourself a haircut at home. I am Pastor Joe Grauman of St. Stephen Lutheran Church, and this is the Midweek Message, a more formal way to come together around God's Word. So today's lesson comes from the book of 1 Samuel, and it tells us a story about how God picked a mighty king. So Samuel is a prophet of the Lord, and he's in a really tough place. You see, he had anointed a previous king, Saul, and Saul got himself in trouble. He disobeyed God, and God withdrew his favor from him, so Samuel was mourning his friend and his anointed person, Saul. God, however, had a task for him, even amidst this grief, and sent him to Jesse's house to pick a new king. Now, of course, with Saul still being the king, Samuel was a little nervous about getting caught and, you know, killed. So um, God told him to go and tell them that he was making a sacrifice to the Lord. So he went there and he got Jesse um, in Bethlehem and all of his sons together and told them that they were going to make a sacrifice to the Lord. He said, Jesse, get your sons. So they're all there and they're ready to make their sacrifice. And Samuel goes about... Um, trying to pick the, uh, the next king. And so the first son came, the eldest son, who's kind of like, you know, the, the go-to one if you're going to be a king. And um, he was very tall and good-looking like Saul was. And God said, nope. Um, you see, God said that God see that everybody sees others outwardly, right? Like when we look at people, we look at what's on the outside. But God sees what's in the heart. God sees what's inside. So the first one, attractive and king-like though he may be, was not anointed. And so Jesse was like, how about the second son? And God was like, nope. And then the third, nope. And the fourth, nope. And finally it got to the point where it seemed that Jesse was all out of sons, even though he had a ton of sons, apparently. And um, so Samuel was like, well, I know it's got to be one of your sons, and you seem to be out of sons. And Jesse said, oh, wait. I forgot about one son. He's out in the he's out in the um, fields, just looking after the sheep. Probably gross. He's a bit of a runt. You don't want him. Samuel, though, being a good prophet, stuck to his guns and said, "No, bring him too." And so this little pipsqueak comes out, and the Bible says that he had beautiful eyes and was quite handsome. And the Lord said to Samuel, "That's the one." I want the little guy. And so Samuel anointed this new king, unlikely though he may be. And that king turned out to be David, who was pretty much like the king. When we think of great kings of Israel, the Davidic line, the tree of David, the star of David, David grew up to be a big deal. He fought Goliath and all that jazz. He messed up too, did some pretty terrible things, killed a lot of people who he shouldn't have killed and all that good stuff. Um, but God took this really unlikely pipsqueak and made him into the greatest king um, of Israel's history. And the funny thing about this, right, is that God uses tons of unlikely people throughout um, the Hebrew Bible and throughout uh, the New Testament too. And a lot of times there's stuff that would say, maybe not pick this one. Moses uh, had a speech impediment and David was kind of the seventh son and he was out there with the sheep and there's um, people throughout the Bible who, are, who say, maybe not me, but God makes them worthy. He takes unlikely people and unworthy people and makes them worthy. And you know what? God puts them to work and God uses these unlikely people um, to do great and tremendous and life-saving things. And you know what? Do you know who's unlikely? Us. Do you know who's flawed? Us. Do you know who messes up? Do you know who's grieving? Um, we are. That none of us is perfect and we don't ever get everything right, um, but God still calls us and uses us and puts us to work. Um, a big part of this story is anointing, uh, which, believe it or not, 
the names that we use for Jesus, whether it's Christ or Messiah, are, they all mean anointed. And many of us, when we're baptized, we get anointed too. Um, the priest or pastor uh, puts oil on our foreheads and names us children of God. And so what, in our baptisms, we step into this long, long line of anointed ones. Um, and that includes Jesus, the Christ. And so we remember in those times that God has put us to work in a very special way and has chosen us and called us beloved. And so when the going gets tough, like I'd imagine it's a little tough right now, uh, we can remember that unlikely though we may be, unworthy though we may be, um, with a tremendous capability to mess up and do the wrong thing, that we have the sure and steady promise that God will use us to do tremendous things and to do God's work in the world. So as we go about the rest of our weeks in this uh, land of COVID-19, um, I hope that we're thinking about ways that God can use us, that we can remember amidst all this hard stuff, um, that God is still using us, even if we're socially distancing or um, stuck at home, uh, that we have work to do as the beloved children of God, whether it's reaching out via phone or FaceTime or donating to uh, people who need it, um, that there's still plenty of work to be done in these difficult times. So be sure to like us and uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like, leave a comment about one way that God is using you, um, that God is putting you to work uh, for others. Um, and with that in mind, let's pray. Good and gracious God, uh, we give you thanks for every new day, um, for the broad diversity of folks, um, likely and unlikely, who make up your world. Um, help us to know that we are beloved and anointed and put to work so that we may do your work of saving, your work of life, your work of love, for the sake of our neighbors and our world. Keep us safe until we can gather again. Bless all those who are sick, who are scared, or who are working to keep others safe and whole. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, your anointed one. Amen. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. I hope you're all well and safe and happy. Um, may God bless you and keep you. And I hope that we can gather again um, in person real soon. Take care. The midweek message is brought to you today by Lent. Lent hits you like a ton of bricks, doesn't it? Think of how Jesus feels. Lent. And the sacred citrus. Yep, it's an orange. It means everyone is welcome and it's full of vitamin C. The sacred citrus, it's an orange. Neener, nee, neener, nee, neener, 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 neener.